Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Brain Pulp TV. We are back again in Magic Arena, and I am back again with a special guest, Matt from Total MTG. Matt, how you doing? I'm very well. Thank you for having me on again. So happy to be here playing some more games with you. So good last time. It was a lot of fun. And like uh, as well, too, in the, the comment section, people really seem to enjoy it from the last video. If you haven't seen the last videos where Matt and I played uh, basically the, the first round of our little mini uh, Challenger Deck tournament, uh, definitely check those out. As well, too, Matt on his channel has overviews of all of the Challenger decks. So if you're still not familiar with the Challenger decks, check out those videos as well. But uh, today we're going to be doing the losers bracket. I, I, it's kind of an unkind way of putting it, but these are the two <laughs> decks that didn't advance to the next round. Uh, and uh, this time, though, I, last time I played Final Adventure, you were going to be playing Final Adventure this time, correct? Oh, yes. I'm playing with the Knights and Lucky Clover. That's what my deck is. And um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm not sort of, you know, this isn't my sort of deck. Definitely not a Golgari deck like this, but I am going to give it a go. And you were kind enough to let me play Flash of Ferocity this time because this is one of the decks that I've really wanted to play. And I thought it would make... People saw me play Final Adventure in the last video, so uh, this time around I get to play a different deck so people can see my perspective of uh, how I can punt with this deck <laughs> better than it's, i can it's, <laughs> it's a cool it's a cool type different type of control deck that one i really i really like the flash deck i think it's you know it's just not like counter it is where well, it is counter go kind of thing but it, it's sort of creatures and it's just really putting creatures it's, it's a cool deck that one yeah simic is actually one of my favorite color combinations as well too mm. so I'm, I'm pretty excited to be playing this deck so definitely probably one of the strongest colors been in standard for a while simic i think definitely now add, for add the... a bit of white in there for the bant but yeah. sorry what was that I said, if you had a bit of white in Bant, is obviously very strong, but Simic has definitely had its good share of cards recently. Yeah, they did, they did a lot with it in uh, the Ravnica block as well, too. Like, yeah, Simic was, was, was really uh, well looked after with that set, so. Um, now, if you haven't watched the previous videos, the way we're going to do this is we are going to get into the match, and we're going to mute each other. So we're talking now, we're going to talk after the match, but we're not going to be able to hear each other or talk during the match. Um, and one thing, because I always forget to mention this, if I don't mention this at the end, I want to mention this now, uh, be sure to once again, check out the other videos, but also drop a like subscribe to Matt's channel as well too. He's been super kind about, uh, working with the six hour time difference between the two of us to, to get online and do this. So, uh, really, really show, show Matt some love, go over to his channel, go into the comment section as well too. say hi to him, uh, yeah. tell him I sent you and, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely check out his channel. That algorithm juice for us. We love it. Oh, so yes. It. Yeah. The YouTube YouTube plays some wonderful little mind games with us sometimes. So yeah. uh, it really does help. I don't mention it often enough, but yeah. uh, any sort of comments, um, like in, in the comment section, not just helping with the algorithm. It's also nice to hear from you guys. So uh, be sure yeah, to... Yeah, we'd love to hear, you know, tell us about our bad plays. Tell us about, you know, the occasional good play <laughs> that we might make. Exactly, you know? yeah. Just Or just say hello. <laughs> Let us know how, you, how you've how been experiencing the challenge yeah. decks if you've been playing them on Arena. Okay, so we are going to get into the, the game right now. Matt, are you ready to go? I am ready. Let's do this. Okay, let's go. So here we go, and I will play first. Um, I mean, this isn't super strong, but we've got the mana we need. We've got opt to search for more. We can flash out some stuff. Yeah, I'm going to keep this. I'll keep this. It's a two land hand. Maybe not the best idea, but still, I think we can keep it. Okay, so do this. And next. And turn. I'm definitely going to grab a uh, island with this. Okay, starting off with a 1-1 one, one human. And uh, I did not crack the land. So... That's fine. <laughs> what we're going to do now instead is we're going to do Wildborn Preserver. So we're going to flash that out, maybe catch him off guard. We're going to see if, if this will work. Um, actually, I can't do that, right? Because... Yeah, I should have. I really should have done that. Kicking myself. Kicking myself for not doing that. For some reason, I was thinking I could tap this for Colorless. I can't do that. And I need... How many land do I need on... Um, to control four or more. Okay, so pass... Matt and I were talking about punts earlier, and uh, kind of a kind of a bad one there. So luckily, the the deck he's playing is not super quick. So I'm going to activate this now, and I'm going to grab. It's going to flash out the Paragon. Okay. It's 
So he's definitely representing some power on the board. Now this only has, it has death, touch, and life. Like, I mean, that's enough, but it doesn't have first strike, so. Okay, so we're gonna do this. This allows me to flash out both the Sailor. Yeah, I'm gonna do this. It also allows me to keep up for Quench if we really need to. Okay, so why don't we, um, I can't do both, so I'm just going to do the Sailor. And does he have an answer for that? Oh, he does have an answer for that. Okay, that's fine, that's fine, because we can still do the Preserver. Now, there's nothing for one green mana he should be able to do to stop this, so I can get rid of his human, at least. I will be taking three. He'll be gaining three, because this does have lifelink. Oh, no, it's only the first turn it comes in. Enters the battlefield, and it gains uh, death, touch, and lifelink, so it doesn't have it anymore, which is good for me. Okay, and then... Um, I could do another Preserver, or I can... Because I, I have options now, so I'm not going to swing in. No attacks, end turn. So I think I'm going to flash out the Sailor, and then I'm going to pump this up for two to make it a 4-4. Four, four. So pass. Okay, so flash out the Sailor. And then I'm going to pay two. Take action, pay two. Auto pay. There we go. So now it's going to be a 4-4. Four, four. And then I'm going to block like this and hope he doesn't have anything. He probably has a pump spell. No. So that really worked out for me. Okay, good. Excellent. I was expecting to lose my creatures there, so I just lost one. The Sailor is expendable anyways. So. Okay, so Fabled Passage. Now, he does have ways of getting cards out of his graveyard again, so those creatures won't be gone for too long, I don't think. I really want to draw another land here. Uh, if I can draw an island here, it'd be really great. Okay. There we go. Okay. Well, forest is fine as well, too. So, um, I mean, I should probably, hmm, you know, I think I'm going to take advantage of it when I can. I'm going to bring out the other preserver now. And then pump this for two. Uh, and then take action. Pump for two more. Auto pay. Okay, so now it's a 6-6 six, six swinging in. Um, because in case he has fine finality, I don't want him to be able to minus four, minus four the Wildborn Preserver. This this means it's going to stick around. So uh, there are some hard removal spells, I believe, in this deck from what I remember. Okay, so that's not going to be able to... It can't attack unless you control a plus one or a, a plus one. Unless you control a 1-1 one, one creature. Uh, but it can still block. Okay, so this is going to be useful. So if I swing in with both... No, I'm just going to swing in with the, this one. Yeah, let's just do that. Swing in with this. And next. It's going to flash that out. So I'm just going to quench that. And next. Excellent. Okay. Okay. So I can also flash out the Brineborn Cutthroat at the end of the turn. It would be nice to have another blue up so I could opt as well too, but... Uh... I can't remember if I mentioned this at the beginning of the video. I am ridiculously tired right now. I stayed up pretty much all night instead of getting some sleep before doing this match. So uh, hopefully I'm not too spaced out during this match. Ugh, man, he's getting the Air Force going there. Luckily, these have both have reach, which is great for us. Yeah, he, he, can, he can swing in now because he does have a 1-1. One, one. Uh, so let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to flash this out. And I'm going to... Which one is this? This for... i uh, take action with this one pay one. That should be the middle one. Okay, good. It is the middle one. Alright. And then I'll decline on the second one. And then we have another Wildborn Preserver. Excellent. This is going to be 
good for us. Uh, so... Can't really attack right now, so I'm just going to go ahead and do no attacks and end the turn. So we can flash out the Wildborn Preserver. That's going to put a counter on this. Oh, Braska. Braska. Assuming he's going to do the second ability, destroy target non land permanent with Rid of Mana cost 3 or less. Ugh. Yeah, this is not good for us. Not good for us at all. Yeah, gonna go for the preserver there. Yep. This is unfortunate. Uh, let's just... Let's opt. Let's see what we get here. Another Brineborn Cutthroat. Do I want that? You know, I think I do. With the Wildborn Preserver, I want to have another creature, another cheap creature, so... I'm going to keep that on top. I'm going to draw it. So I need to be able to try to get rid of Vraska here, so... Uh, then pass... And pass... I could have flashed this out and then flash this out, but then I wouldn't have been able to have any, so I'm just going to do this now. Flash this out. Put another counter on the Cutthroat. And then my turn. Okay, so this enters the battlefield tap unless I control an island. I control an island, and I can pay two blue and two to scry two. Um, so if I swing in with the Wildborn Preserver... And then flash, I can make it a 6-6. Six, six. I think we go for the throat here. I'm just going to go for the throat here. Yeah, let's go for this. Let's do this and I can flash out the uh, cutthroat. So if he double blocks the preserver... He can trade, but he'd be trading away both his creatures. Okay. I will do this. Uh, is there a point of doing this this way? I guess... N do I bother? Yeah, you know what? I'm going to do this now, just because I can use up the mana. Uh, take action, and then I'm going to pay four. Four. Auto pay. So we lost the cutthroat, which is fine. But we have the preserver still. He could swing in for... He doesn't have a 1-1, one -one, so he can't swing in with the Lovestruck Beast. He can swing in for four by air, which is fine. He can bring this out as well, too. Turning... Okay. Okay. Okay, now he can. Now he can. Now he can swing with the beast. Okay, murderous rider. Ugh, this is not looking good for me right now. Can't really do anything with her except for her plus ability. Yeah, swing in with both of those. I really need to draw into something good here. Ooh, he's swinging with the, the beast as well, too. I'd be taking nine. I can't really take nine. Well, I could take nine. Do I take the nine? This is the big thing here. No, I'm going to have to... I'm going to block. I'll block the one. So I'm down to 8, which is not great for me. Uh, I've got a quench, which is not going to do much. Uh, I'll just... No attacks and... End the turn. So this is going to kill this, and then I'm just dead. Lucky Clover. I will let that hit, because don't really have much choice. Ugh.
was I? Yeah, I wasn't getting any other answers, so. And that's going to be the end of that. Oh, really unfortunate. Really unfortunate. I don't think I played that the way, the best way I could. But uh, there is, it is the best two out of three. So we're going to go to the sideboards and we're going to see if there's anything I can weed out from this deck. But, uh, but yeah, I just was not, was not doing it that turn. Um, Stainful Stroke, Negate. I think I may bring in some Negates. I think I need to bring in some of these as well too, right? Okay, so let's bring in three of these. Actually, you know what? Do I need that? Do I need those three of those? Let's put two of them in. Let's take out one Cutthroat, one Sailor. I really want to bring in the Negates. Let's bring in both Negates. We'll take out one Quench and one Opt. Yeah, okay. So two of the Singers... We're going to bring in two of the negates, and uh, we're taking out Quench, Cutthroat, Sailor, and an Opt. Okay, well, we'll see how this works for us. Hopefully, this is going to be a bit better than the last game. For us, anyways, it went swimmingly for Matt. <laughs> okay, we're going to play first, and we're going to have to mulligan. And this we can keep. So we'll keep this, and we'll get rid of the Intervention. Okay, so we're going to try to make up for some mistakes we made last time. And have a bit of a better start. Ugh, love struck beast right off the bat. Okay, so forest. And next. End turn. So I can flash out the cutthroat. I don't want to block with it though. But I am going to flash it out. On the end step. So swing in, pass take it and then we'll bring out the cutthroats Ooh, okay so one more island and i get uh frilled mystic online so um do i you know what i'm just gonna bring out yeah i'm gonna bring out the hippocamp uh, i'm gonna swing in because why not okay now if he swings in there's no way i'm blocking this with the hippocamp I will just take the damage. Okay, Beast comes out. Well, now I will. Okay, so there we go. And, ooh, now we have we have Frilled Mystic online. We have Opt. Um, I'm not swinging in. <laughs> uh, look at the top X card your library. Okay, so, yeah. So, no, we're just going to keep up our counter spells and no attacks. We're going to be able to draw some extra uh, with the Hippocamp. We are going to be taking damage from the Love Struck Beast, which sucks, but it is what it is. Resolve. I really hope he casts something. If he casts something, we can, we can uh, counter it. The Love Struck Beast is just going to come through. I'm going to... I mean, I could... It's, it's such little value for the Frilled Mystic to flash it out to block that, so I'm just going to pass and take the five. And yeah, now we'll counter that. We're gonna get to draw a card. We have a negate in hand as well too. I will take action. And we're gonna be able to swing in with a big board here. Okay, so uh, now, do I want to swing in? I mean, he can block. He can double block. I don't think he wants to though. If he double blocks, he can't swing in with the beast anymore so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to swing in with the frilled mystic do i keep up the cutthroat or do i swing in with it you know what? i'm just going to swing in with the frilled mystic takes three that's fine and then end turn we can keep growing the the uh the cutthroat. We can actually grow it big enough to trade with this. Okay, so he's going to get the scry. Yeah, because I have enough to, to cast two spells. Um, he has one mana left, so I can counter it if I do two, right? 
Yeah, that's going to be... So he has to pay, so I can just, I just have to pay one. A counter target spell unless it's controller pays twice. So yeah, we'll pay one. Uh, auto pay. It's fine. Okay, so we have the Temple of Mystery, so we're going to get the Scry. That is going to get countered. And if he swings in with the Lovestruck Beast, I am going to cast Opt and then block it with the Cutthroat. And that can go on the bottom. And I'm going to block the beast. There we go. Okay. Okay. So uh, we'll do the uh, temple here so I can scry one. That is definitely going to go on top. And next, let's go ahead and swing in with the Frilled Mystic. And if he double blocks, I can flash this out. Excellent. So, in turn. Now, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to cast something, draw a card, and then play this, even though it has flash, because I need one more mana for that. Um, I'm going to negate that, I think. Because that draws me another card. So, I get the Ambusher. And let's just flash this out. Choose that as a target. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and swing in with those two. It's got just one card left in hand. I'm gonna block, it's fine. And end the turn. Okay, so he's just got the innkeeper and a land. So I can flash this out. Draw a card. Flash out the ambush. Take action. Auto pay. There we go. And just swing him with everything. Swing into the whole team. Now you can definitely double lock something like the Frilled Mystic, but there we go. So I have him down to two. Uh, take action. Do five. There we go. Okay, yeah, so that was important as well, too. Not casting anything and then being able to get another wolf out was great. I'm pretty sure I have this one. Even if he has finality, fine and finality, this still lives. <laughs> okay, it's just a land. Okay, so I'm pretty sure I have this. <laughs> I will block it. There we go. Okay. And that pretty much clears it. And we're just going to go ahead and swing in with the team. Okay, so we tied it up. We tied it up. So maybe, maybe, I'm starting to wake up a little bit as well too. I'm starting to wake up as, uh, as well too. So we're going to go to sideboards again. There we go. I thought it froze for a second there. Uh, I don't think I'm going to change anything. I think I like the way this is. And I don't think we need to do anything different. Uh, Aether Gust might be actually good. Choose a target that's permanent that's red or green. Its owner puts it on the top of their library. You know what? I'm not going to... No, I'm going to I'm gonna leave that. I'm going to leave that. I'm just going to keep things the way they are. I think it really worked well for us last, last game, so hopefully it'll work well for us this game as well, too. We even mulliganed as well, too, with that game, so... Okay, so Matt's going to decide if he's going to play first. He is going to play first. Oh, this is not... I mean, this isn't bad. I would love a green source, especially two Frilled Mystics. I can keep this, though, because of the Cutthroat and be able to flash this out, so I'm going to keep this. Okay, so he's already got a 1-1. One, one. I will bring this out as well, too. It's going to enter tapped. I mean, I could have just waited till next turn anyways, but beast, alrighty. 
Now, the good thing is, if he casts the beast now, I can quench it. So, I'm going to pass the turn. And I'm going to quench it. We have a green source finally, which is great for us. And we have a second green source. Let's do the uh, we'll do the temple first, so we get to scry. Um, yeah, you know I'm actually gonna leave that on top. And I will pass the turn and turn. Now I would love to flash out the the cutthroat first, but this actually is going to if I flash this out instead. I'm not getting extra value for it, but no, you know what? I can take the two. I can take the two. I can wait. I'd rather grow the, the Cutthroat. Lucky Clover. Lucky Clover in this deck can be absolutely nuts. Okay, so then I'm going to flash out the Cutthroat. And it immediately gets disfigured, so uh, there we go. I'm going to bring that out. Gain a life. So now we're going to be able to be in uh, Frilled Mystic territory, because we do have two green sources now, which is great for us. And then there's no reason why I wouldn't flash out the Singer here to... Okay, so... Let's see if he's able to pump it. Okay. Okay, that's fine. At least we're not going to take the damage from this, but Murderous Rider is kind of annoying. I'm so glad everything in this deck has Flash, because then I can wait to the last minute in order to do certain things. Oh, yes, the Ambusher could be great here. So we're just not going to play anything, and we're going to see what he does, and we'll wait to his till the end step. Okay, so I'm not going to... I could flash out the creature. I'm not going to. Because I want to be able to have Frilled Mystic up in case he decides to do some shenanigans. And if he doesn't do anything, then we're just going to do... Yeah, we're just going to do the Ambusher. Bring out the Ambusher. Does he have an answer for that? Oh, Noxious Grasp. Unfortunate. Okay, so we'll do that again, and then next, and end turn. Man, losing the Ambusher. Uh, we actually can do this, and then still have Frilled Mystic up. So let's do this. There. And then I'm going to block that. Okay, so we get rid of the Innkeeper, and then whatever he casts, we're actually we're going to let the Innkeeper go. And then our turn. And then another forest. Okay. Uh, no attacks. And turn. Definitely keeping the Frilled Mystics up. Lucky Clover. Um, yeah, I'm still fine with that. I'm still fine with that. And then let's go ahead and do this. Let's scry two. Sinister Sabotage, I don't need that, but I will take the Sabotage on top. Just a little bit of added insurance. No attacks. So now I can counter two different things. And he's playing a land. This could be a bit grindy at this point. And then we'll do this again. Uh, Wildborn Preserver and Quench. I don't think Quench is going to be as useful here, so that's going to go on the bottom, but we are going to keep the Preserver. And no attacks. And turn. So this is a pretty pretty good hand to have against him. Love struck beast. Okay, so that's gonna resolve. He's gonna create a bunch of human tokens, which sucks, but it is what it is, but I'm not gonna use it on that. Uh so what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually preserve her first. And then I'm going to Frilled Mystic the Beast. 
So this allows me to make the preserver a 3-3. Three, three. Take action. I only have one mana left up, right? Yeah. So take action there. Make it a 3-3. Three, three. Auto pay. Now, he is going to be able to cast something. Uh, take action. Counter that. Because he does still have three mana up. Four mana up. Love struck beast. Okay, so that's unfortunate for us, but it is what it is. And he's going to get the beast out as well, too. That's really unfortunate. I mean, he's got a ton of little critters out there now. Uh, we are going to gain some life, which is good for us. And end of the turn. So we could potentially swing in for quite a bit here. He's doing the math. He's going to swing in with everything except that. Okay, so let's do this. Let's... I'm throwing away a counter spell here. But I want to be able to trade with the beast. Uh, so this is... What is this doing? You draw a card and you lose one life. I think I want to, and whenever you cast, it's going to copy it. So, I'm not sure how this interaction works. Is this going to... If I sabotage that, I can only sabotage the one copy, right? Like, it's he's going to create copies for it no matter what, so I'm just going to let that resolve. Yeah. Man, he's going to draw a bunch of extra cards, which is unfortunate for us. Uh, take action, and then one, two, three. Auto pay. Now, is he going to be able to get rid of it? Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Choose blockers. So, I can block... I can possibly take care of that and then take care of one of that. I'm taking six. So, I need to draw something off the top of my deck here or I am dead. Oh, I'm screwed. <laughs> oh, no! No, 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 no. Preserver. He's got six, seven, eight. Oh, I'm down to three. No, I'm dead. That's it, I'm dead. Yeah. Oh, man. Those lucky charms. Lucky charms. Those lucky clovers. Oh, shoot. I was so worried about getting creatures on the board, and I should have stopped those clovers from getting out there. They're so powerful. Uh, well, we can just Sinister Sabotage that. I mean, it's not going to do us any good anyways, but it's on the top there. Yeah. Yep. Oh, and Veraska as well. This is unreal! This is unbelievable. Ugh. Man, talk about just... Oh, salt on the wounds. Yeah. Can only block one. Oh my goodness, that was a shellacking. Are you there? Hey, buddy, how you doing? That last game turned so bad so quickly. Oh, that was an epic match. It was a whole match was epic. Oh, there. oh my goodness. Yeah. No, no, it was, it was absolutely great, but I can't believe how quick... Uh, the one thing I gotta ask you about this interaction, I'm not sure how it will work. You yeah. had the two clovers out, and then when you yeah. use the um, pay one life draw card ability, if I had countered the original spell, that wouldn't have stopped the count the uh, copies from happening, correct? I'm pretty sure because it's still the copies there. Yeah, I think. exactly right. Um, so, 
I made a mistake when I, I didn't target the same creature with the murderous rider, so I actually lost my murderous rider. So it killed it in the first one, but then I didn't copy it, which means it didn't go, you know, for me to play again. So it went straight to the graveyard <laughs> as well. So it's like, damn. Yeah, I'm because the copies are already there. Um, it's the, the triggers already happened. Yeah, isn't exactly. It? Um, right. If anyone, if we're wrong, just someone let us know in the comments. But yeah, I'm, I was pretty I'm sure pretty that's what's sure going to happen. I didn't want to throw away the counter spell mm -hmm. there, just in case. I was holding counter spells. I had, I was, I thought yeah. I was doing pretty good because I had, a, I had at one point two frilled mystics, and then the, um, the, um, the other counter spell as well, two in hand. But when oh, you, yeah. when you were casting the clovers, I was like, no, I don't want to use them on this. And in retrospect, now, I definitely yeah. should have got rid of those clovers. So. Yeah, the covers are, are definitely what makes the deck tick around, I think, because it got me like six or seven tokens straight away, which means I had the blockers oh. in case you, you managed to attack over. Because I don't think there's I don't think there's anything with trample in the deck, is there? I don't think. I'm not sure. Um I don't think the wolves are trample, are they? I don't think so, no, yeah. No. And then it was just a matter of just the it's it, the what I think makes this deck is the innkeeper and the clovers. The innkeeper just is that constant card drawing engine. Yeah. Yeah, I really and, um, thought I had you in that third game for a while there, off. but uh... oh, I really did well, I just I really <laughs> did. And get the double clover through, I, I might be okay. Yeah, that I mean that um, that but... is one of the great things about that deck, and then as well too when when you have the clover out and you're able to cast the uh, the smitten uh, was it smitten oh yeah, sword yeah. Master? even with minimal knights it's still oh. worth doing because you get the multiple triggers. Yeah, it's devastating. It's great. absolutely devastating. So, but that was yeah. a lot of fun. I I really enjoyed that oh. match. Uh, that it's, was a it's, really good match. That was. Now, people, these are being released at the same time. Uh, this and the the actual finals, which was Allied Fires versus um, Calamity, right? Clade, yeah, yes. Calamity, 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 Calamity. That's Cal going up exactly the same time. Yes, yeah. much it. So, if you haven't watched that match, definitely go and watch that that match as well too. It's going to be up on Matt's channel right now. Um, but there was, I'm not going to spoil anything. But there's quite a difference between the two styles of play with with these two with yeah. this pair of deck. Uh, decks versus the other pair of decks so it's definitely worth checking out uh both of the the uh the matches because it's uh it's it's a different experience for both matches yeah definitely yeah i think you know they they were very interesting results i think that's for sure and um this game was no different either this was you know this was a lot closer than i thought it was going to be you know i really thought the flash deck might overrun it a little bit um but you know maybe i've just just got a little bit better at playing this deck you know after playing it a few more times because i definitely when i when i showcased it as just the deck on my channel i played it terrible so <laughs> <laughs> terrible i think i went one and three or something stupid like that. So, uh, but yeah it does depend what you get out of it it's like you get the inkeeper you get lucky clovers it's good if you manage to get the walls constantly out then it just overtakes a game um, you still need a bit of luck in magic, that's for sure. And being able to sideboard in the um, that removal spell, which only targets was it green and is it green and blue creatures? Yeah. Uh, green and white. So green it only white. gets but it's got a lot of green creatures, and it's got four in the deck. Uh, you know, in deck and sideboard, so I can actually board in four of them and have two disfigures as well, which you know it's very good against the uh, wild, uh, the flash one that can get it out of hand and get really big. Yeah, because. Yeah. You just gotta wait for that interaction for them to pump up, and then you just kill it with the minus two two. So it's you know, or, or wait and then kill it with a noxious grasp. It's it's got good removal for green cards in there. Without yeah. Doubt. yeah. Flash is easily one of my favorite mechanics that they've ever come oh, up with in yeah. Magic. I love the fact that you can actually have the chance to cast creatures at instant speed. Um, yeah. Being able to hold back mana, like I said, I I thought with the the, the amount of counter spells I had in hand, I thought I was uh, mm. I was going to have that third game. But uh, I mean, it's 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 nice to see. Pretty much, I think each of the decks now have had their their day, being able to show what they can really do. So, yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah, it's it's yeah. it because we talked about it before, and the um, one second, I'm just gonna go because I, I have a horrible time remembering the names of the decks. Oh yeah, so we we discussed it before, and the final adventure deck you feel is sort of like the um, least powerful yeah. of of the four. Yeah, definitely. But in well, this, it didn't in see this me sense, in that one did it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. That's what I like yeah. about this: the fact that it can actually yeah. it can show its 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 true colors sometimes, and uh, and really sort of like you know have it stay in the sun so yeah see i definitely think as well is, is that maybe like i said that i was probably viewing as well that i don't play the deck very well but then after giving it more go you can see it but it's it's definitely got a so much symmetry in that deck it just works really well together it really you know the adventure decks do it does work very well 
Um, as you you know, there's ways to upgrade these decks a little bit. A flash deck, I think you bring in Brazen Borrowers in yours. I think you bring in that. That's obviously quite an expensive card, but that's something we could possibly try in the future. Is like we can take the yeah. decks, and maybe do a bit of upgrades to them, some tweaking to it, and then sort of have a, a similar type of match. Yeah. Hopefully, I mean, if people want to see the upgrades weeks. of the decks, I've you know, had a few comments I've seen recently that people do like to see the upgrades. Um, you know, probably pretty hard to upgrade. Well, no, you can't. There is different cards you could add into the Calamity deck, but it's, you know, it's some of the, the Calamity deck is pretty much as it is. <laughs> it's yeah, it's, the... it's that one's pretty <laughs> much as tuned as it's going to be sort of thing. So, I mean, like maybe like you you mentioned in a previous video, either putting maybe three Ember Cleaves in there or just yeah. taking one out, the one that's in there out and putting something else yeah. in. But uh, but yeah, otherwise it, sure. it runs pretty well on its own. Does it run the Chandra Spitfire in there? I'm not too sure if it does. Because that's a definite card that would I definitely go in there. No, it doesn't. No, that would be a card that would definitely, and it's only a, a uncommon, I think it is. It's the one that every time Calamity pings, yeah, Chandra Spitfire, uh, every time an opponent is dealt damage, non combat damage, it gets plus three, plus naught. And that can win in a turn in one attack. Um, you know, that would definitely be a massive upgrade to that deck, changing that, I'm saying. Um, she triggers that triggers something else trigger and it just carries on and all of a sudden you're attacking with like this massive 11 or 12 13 <laughs> flyer in the air in one turn and the opponent's just dead <laughs> um, but yeah now there's definitely ways we could upgrade all the decks so if people do want to see it let us know yeah yeah definitely let us know in the comments section if you want to see something like this again i'm pretty sure uh matt and i are going to try to do this more often well i mean yeah. we couldn't do it less often because it took us years to do this but uh <laughs> it's definitely something we're, we're going to do again in the future um hopefully in the next couple weeks possibly a month yeah. i'm not sure but it's definitely something yeah. you're going to see again yeah definitely very soon yeah because i really enjoy playing it this way as well it's the um, best way to play magic as well playing with friends so yeah exactly it's it's, a, it's, it's a lot of fun so yeah. I, I laugh more when i actually play against people i know uh yeah. than against um you know strangers for the most part so this was this was it was the most fun i've had losing in a long time so yeah. we'll have to we'll have to we'll have to keep up a, a punk count between the two of us as well because we do make a lot of punts <laughs> so we could do that for each episode like you know matt leading four punts to two to <laughs> and stuff like that. so we'll keep a little chart for you when we make mistakes <laughs> that's an excellent idea <laughs> so. yeah so Matt, thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate uh, you taking the time to do this, especially once again, because we have about a six hour difference between our time zones. Yeah. So you stay up a bit uh, later uh, to do this with me. So I really appreciate that. Yeah, no worries at all. I'll always do it. So good fun. And thank you guys very much for watching. Once again, if you haven't already, definitely check out the video that's on Matt's channel with the other match that we did here, the, the actual finals. It's it was, it was a fun match, and hopefully you guys will enjoy it. Also, be sure to drop a like and subscribe as well, too. Those really help the channels. And uh, if you're not familiar with Matt's channel, definitely, definitely check it out because he's got a ton of great content, and he comes out with new videos each and every week, multiple videos each and every week. So that'll be a refreshing uh change from this channel so uh definitely go to this <laughs> channel and check that out however that is it for this video so thank you guys again for watching and we'll see you all in the next video